You're listening to the Sage Brush Podcast. Relax, close your eyes, and listen to tales of the Old West. Hello, MPIR listener. This is Clyde J. Gale. I have an important challenge for you. With the COVID-19 crisis, my household income has dramatically reduced. So to keep me in house and home, pay the internet bills, MPIR server bills, electric bills, I need to ask you for help. Are you up to the challenge? Please, if you can help. We have millions of listeners across the internet and only a handful have sent in donations. Please, a $5, $20, $50 donation or more will help me. As always, thank you for your past support. Please visit www.mpir-otr.com and click on the donations page to send in a donation via PayPal. Your help will be greatly appreciated. Thank you for your past support. And thank you for listening to MPIR. At the gallop! Fort Laramie, starring Raymond Burr as Captain Lee Quince. Specially transcribed tales of the dark and tragic ground of the wild frontier. The saga of fighting men who rode the rim of empire. And the dramatic story of Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. She wore a yellow ribbon, she wore it in the winter and the merry month of May. And when they asked her why... Enough, I, and Trini, she it, enough, she said, enough! Her lover who was far, far away, far away, far away. Oh, she wore it for her lover who was far, far away. Oh, oh, my gracious. There's a certain amount of spirit in you, Feeney. I can't say it's anything I warm to, but spirit it is. And there's a certain amount of spirit in you, too, Meriwether. You've been draining them bottles of mine right regular, seems to me. Fortification, Feeney. And, uh... Ah, defense. You talk like you already joined up. Ah, a gift of the creative mind. I see myself riding forward with the troops... Dodging an arrow here, a bullet there, guidons flying, death defying. Have you ever been on a horse, Meriwether? You dare ask that of the man who played Richard III for 314 stirring performance, not to say memorable. Just how many bottles of my snake potion have you inhaled? A horse, a horse, my kingdom for a horse. Ah. The remarkable elixir, Feeney. You'd, you'd notice a, a new depth and resonance to my tone. 
Ahoy! A customer of mine down in Colorado got a brand new voice from drinking my mixture. Used to bellow like a calf, folks said. Took six bottles to turn the trick, but today they call him Whispering Ruggle. Ah, uh, <laughs> you're trying to alarm me. He cured his calluses, too. Had them clean off. Yep. Ah, cruel fortune. Did you see that, Feeney? The bottle slipped through my careless fingers. I seen you pitch it out. I don't think you're brave enough for the Army Merriweather. <laughs> uh, whoa, Posey. Whoa, girl. Ease to, girl. That's the way. Now, you're decided, are you? Uh, imposing sight, young fortress. Once we cross that bridge, enter them gates, we're down to cases, Merriweather. You ain't decided on Army life. You better climb down off in this wagon right now. Country above heart, Feeney. The fire of the patriot burns bright within me. Drive on. I long to rejoin my old regiment. You long for a belly full of food, just like me. To the colors, Feeney. Drive on. Get up, posy girl. At the gallop, pole. <laughs> If you can write, fill out the forms there. If you can't write, but you can talk, tell me, I'll fill them out. If you can't write or talk, we don't need you. Uh, about my uniform, Colonel. Who said that? I spoke quite clearly and distinctly, I believe. You? I. What's your name, mister? Granville Merriweather. You some kind of funny man, mister? I dare say I'm not without humor. Not to the point of buffoonery, mind you, Stand but... up, mister. <clears throat> Very well. You want to make that yes, sergeant? Why, yes, sergeant, I believe I do. Now, what's your name? Granville Mary. Well... Your real name, mister. Yeah. I suppose I must. I'm waiting. It's a... <clears throat> Botkin, Sergeant. Arnie Botkin. Arnie Botkin? <laughs> oh, no, now that sets me up. Arnie Botkin? Why, there ain't no such a name as Arnie Botkin. Why, you they... another funny man, oh, mister. Well, I ain't near as funny as he is. I done a little slider hand in my time, but I never produced no Granville Merriweather out of an Army Botkin. Army Botkin? There's no such Must name Must I be I... subjected to this ridicule, I say, sir? Is this the reward of a patriot? You two together? Alas, we are, but only in these last dark days. Well, it comes from me having a heart of gold, Sergeant. I let him join my act, you might say, seeing he was down on his... Oh, Arnie distortion, Botkin. pure distortion. Allow me, sir, your ear. Now, wait. Just you wait, or I'll allow you a sight more in my ear. Now, I tell you, we get ourselves some strange ones in this army, but I swear you two come right close to the limit. You ain't saying we can't get in, sir. A sergeant. man has his right, sir, and precious among them is the right to heed his country's call to arms. Stand to the colors, man, against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Are you going to stop, mister? Well, I... I must say, uh... <clears throat> yes, yes, yes. All right. Now we'll do this one at a time. You. What's your name? Feeney. Phineas Feeney. Where are you from? From? You got a home... Well, it's right outside the door, Sergeant. Posey and me, we got this little wagon rig, and wherever we light at sundown, that's home. Posey, you married? <laughs> indeed, oh, indeed. And uh, may I say, sir, no couple were ever more ideally suited. <laughs> oh, I beg pardon, Sergeant. Posey's my horse. I used to work the riverboats, Mississippi, anywhere from St. Louis to New Orleans, dancing, singing, minstrel work. Since the war, I got itchy feet to come west. The last four years, I've been over the most of it, too. Put down, you're an actor. Oh, I must protest. In the name of the spoken word, the ancient art, call him what he is, but do not degrade my honored profession. I run a little medicine show, Sergeant. Oh, I got pots and pans and calico, but mostly I entertain folks into buying a 
little tonic I put together. If you must put a trade behind his name, inscribe the words low comedy, but in deference to the Druze, in the name of Edwin Booth and Morris Barrymore, yea, and Granville, Merriweather... Are you spoiling for the guardhouse, mister? Uh, if best to serve my country more, then yes, shackle me. Cut from me my tongue. I'm toying with that idea. Captain Quint, sir? Sergeant? Any idea whose rig that is outside? A horse and wagon, Captain? It's his. Something wrong, are they? Your horse is ailing. Better see to it. Oh, she ain't at. Not for too long, she ain't. Corporal of the guard will give you a hand. Show you where to move that rig. Now, go on. Uh, I, I sure will. Allow me to introduce myself. Go help your friend. Oh, I dare say he's equal to the task, while I, on the other hand... Move! <clears throat> exactly, Sergeant. What is that all about, Gores? Now, ain't that something? They're answering the call to the colors, Captain. They're what? Well, you could put it another way, I guess. They're starving to death. How many new men out there, Captain? In B Company? Twenty. Pretty sorry sight. Must have hit the bottom of the barrel. A long time ago, Major. After that, we scraped it. What you see out there is after scraping. Hey, the horse. Out! Forward! Uh, one, two, four, four, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. Mount! They can't mount? It's the sergeant time, Major. I've seen enough, Captain. We've got plans to lay out. Yes, sir. What have we got out there, Lee? Pretty good cross-section of what's coming into the Army these days, Major. It's still a question. What's that? Dregs, failures, fugitives. Men running from the law, from women, from work. Men running from themselves. Just before they blow their brains out, they join the army. Is that what we've come to? They can still stop bullets and arrows. I don't expect talk like that from you, Captain. It's straight talk. I don't see that. Now we'll talk about it inside. Oh, sit down, Captain. Thank you, sir. Men who can stop bullets and arrows. Since when did you start feeling that way about the Army? I'm in the Army. That's how I feel about it. I didn't get here by accident, Major. I meant to. That's all the Army is. How men feel about it. It's good or bad on that feeling. These new men... I didn't see any Sergeant Gorses among them. Gorse is a 30-year man. He's like me. Doesn't know any better. Or any worse. Now, what does that mean, any worse? It means we didn't try anything else and fail. Some of your new army out in that parade ground joined up out of plain hunger. Their feeling for the army is it's a place to eat, get clothes to wear, and a cot to sleep on. Maybe the army's at fault. If this is all we can attract, we must be to blame. Fifty cents a day and all the jerky you can eat? Sure, the army's at fault. But the kind of trooper you want isn't up for a price. That feeling I was talking about, well, it's... It's not something you can buy. I hope it's something we can cultivate. We're going to need it soon. Here. Pete Hazen's report on the Wind River area. Shoshone? Yeah, and the Sioux. Hazen says Crazy Horse let a few dog soldiers into the Shoshone encampment about a week ago. It's all in the report. But they're powwowing about something. We well, haven't had a patrol over there since early last fall. They had a bad winter, didn't they? Snows. Mm, worst in years. Now they've melted, those range peaks will be a lot more accessible. Well, we shouldn't have any trouble with good scouting. And Pete's the best there is. Yeah, we'll have to do without him. He's been sent up to Montana country. Won't be back for at least a month. You read his report... 
and study the Wind River range maps. We may have to move before the month's out. I hope they learn to mount by then. Have to do the best we can, Captain. Against dog soldiers, Major? We'll have to do better than we can. No good for us. Come in. You busy, Captain? Yeah, I am, Mr. Sabitz. Still with the maps, huh? Still with them. Oh, what's that? More reports in Wind River? Oh, uh, no, sir. It's something I thought you'd want to see, though. Winter Garden, Booth, benefit for the Shakespeare Statue Fund, Friday evening, November 25th, 1864... Julius Caesar. I was there, Captain. You were? Yes, sir. That's the playbill. Yeah, I see it is. I've never forgotten it. It was a year before I went to West Point. But I had enough sense to know that I was experiencing one of the rare moments in the theater. Mm -hmm. You see there? Junius Booth played Cassius. Edwin was Brutus. And John Wilkes Booth was Mark Antony. Yes, sir. Of course, that was before he... Well, it's very interesting, Mr. Seibert. So but you I... don't know why I wanted to show it to you yet. Look who played Casca. Casca, Mr. Granville Merriweather. Well? Well? Well, he's here, Captain. He's joined the Army. As a matter of fact, he's in B Company. He's been in B Company nearly three weeks now. Yes, sir, I know, except that I didn't realize he was the Granville Merriweather. And a while ago, I got to looking through a bunch of old playbills, and I ran across this. Well, he's played nearly all of Shakespeare, Captain. He still can't mount a horse, Mr. Seibertz. I know, and I don't understand it. On the stage, he moves with the greatest ease and grace. For, for instance, in duels on the stage, of course. I've seen him show Mr. real agility. Mr. Seibertz. Oh, you said you were busy, didn't you? I said I was. I wonder, Captain. Maybe if I work with Mr. Merriweather on his horsemanship... You make a trooper out of him, you're due for a medal. Oh. Tell him to make out his learning for a part. That might be the best approach. Tell you the truth, I'd like to meet him and talk to him anyway. Uh, you talk to him. Ask him if he ever played the part of Kit Carson. Kit Carson, Captain? Yeah. We could use a good guide. Right easy now, posy girl. Just stretch your legs good. You ain't up to more. Showing me a little, huh? Well, it's not that I ain't pleased, cozy girl, but you got any idea what happened to me if they found me out here this time of night? Matter of fact, they found you around here at all, lady. Yeah. You work good. You come along now. I'll blanket you. There's oats and water waiting. I don't need you taking cold, girl. You need this blanket a sight more than I do. There you go now. Get to your eating. I'll stand watch on you. You just don't learn much, do you, Feeney? Do what? Oh, it's you, Sergeant. I, I swear I'm just no hand to see at night. You seem good enough to lead Posey around the corral, let her straight to oats and water. You see good at night, Feeney. Oh, much obliged for your saying so, Sergeant, but You I, don't I... hear real good, though, night or day. Well, now, there's where I have my real trouble, Sergeant, here, and, oh, I sure hope I didn't miss nothing important. You miss tattoo again, Feeney. That's going on two weeks running, you miss tattoo. Oh, now, that's bad. I know it is. You missed I... hearing me tell you to get rid of Posey. You missed all them warnings about stealing oats and buying stall space from the stable detail with that tonic of yours. Uh, do you think it's wax, Sergeant, all clogged up there in my ears? You think that's the cause? I just think one thing about it, Feeney. I think it's all behind you. You do? One thing, we're moving out in a day or so. Now, if you're out on patrol, I just don't see you stealing back here every night tending to Posey. 
That puts a crimp in it, all right. Another thing, between now and then, your time's liable to be more occupied. You might even say confining. Do what? You're going to be in the guardhouse till then, Feeney. Ain't you gonna wash up, Meriwether? I am a saintly man, Feeney. And cleanliness is only next to godliness. And I've been next to you. You've been two days in that, McClellan. A little of this sweet water won't hurt you none. <laughs> sweet water. Your ignorance is boundless as always, Feeney. Oh, now, ain't you smart? Mm -hmm. This is sweet water, every single drop of it. Sweet water river, that's its name. What's in a name? Oh, but indeed, what's in a name? Ah. Ah. Cuts right between the two ranges, the sweet water does. The granite mountains to the north and down that away, the green mountains. You travel with Lewis and Clark, I presume. Well, I've been during near every place there was. Me and Posey, we sold our little tonic all over. Oh, I say, Feeney, the elixir. You brought a few tankards with you, surely? Oh, it's all gone, Meriwether. What you didn't swill down, what I didn't use to buy stall space, why, that sergeant just plain took prisoner. Yeah, but the formula, you you, you, you can make more. Formula? Yeah. <laughs> you use the right base, you can add what you will. It's no matter. Yes, sir, Meriwether, we put some riding in the last couple of days. We can't be more than a day from the Wind River range. The, the right base? It's corn liquor when I can get it. Ah, 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 now, to get to Wind River, they must figure on cutting up to Beaver Creek, following it to the little Popo Adji, and enter the basin from there. Leastwise, that's what I'd do. Yes, yes, now, but suppose I can't lay my hands on a quantity of corn liquor, as you call it. What, what, as what? everyone calls it. That's its name. But that being the case, learn a lesson, Meriwether. Any fruit will ferment left alone. <laughs> Brilliant, Feeney. Brilliant observation. I'll remember that. You go far enough up through that basin, you can see cow elk and their young feeding on choke cherries. And right alongside, there's apt to be black bears drinking from the stream. Yes, sir, and where it's swampy like as not, there'll be moose grazing. You know what you're talking about, Feeney? <clears throat> Captain, sir? Uh, yes, sir, Captain? You got a uniform, Feeney? Uh, yes, sir, I sure have. It, it's right over there, sir. Put it on. Uh, yes, sir. I'm glad you spoke out that way, Captain. The man might chill. And... Merriweather. <clears throat> right here, sir. Report to Sergeant Gorse. Tell him I said you were to stand picket duty tonight. Yes, sir. And the rest of this duty, all I want to hear out of you is yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Move out. You'll draw extra guard duty when we get back to Fort Laramie, Feeney. A man assigned to tether horses isn't supposed to take a bath first. Yes, yeah, sir. You know this country? Or were you just out John Merriweather? Oh, I know it, sir. From the basin clean up to the ice fields. Travel it by horse, did you? Part-time. Part-time leading, Posey. The going steep, you get up in the range itself. Say I want to follow Wind River to where it joins Green River, and then yeah, I... Beg pardon, Captain. Well? You can't do that, what you said. Wind River don't join Green River nowhere. All right. You know the Shoshone? I traded with them. Fair. When it struck me to. You don't like them? Well, they're people. Some is rotten and some suits me fine. I traded fair with them that suits me. You joined the army to get back at the rotten ones, huh? Eh? Uh, no, sir, that ain't why. Why, then? I joined the army so as I could eat regular. I got some maps, some scout reports in my tent, Feeney. You've got a job of reading ahead tonight. Uh, well, I ain't the best reader in the world, Captain. Then I'll read them to you. Nothing says an army scout's got to know how to read. by map or instinct, Captain? By map, instinct, and Feeney. If he's right, we cut 40 miles off our old course. 
It's a hard pull on the horses. Well, Posey made it under full pack. You sure sold on Feeney, ain't you, Captain? Gotta be. He's as near to a scout I got. We got a rendezvous point with him? Yep, over this ridge. There's forage there and water. And that's by map, instinct, and Feeney. Yes, sir. Well, how does it look to you, Sergeant? Like Feeney knows his business, Captain. Well, let's go down. There's a horse yonder, Captain, over by the stream. Yeah, I see it. Feeney. Hoped I'd last till you showed up, Captain. How bad is it, Finney? I'm full of holes and dripping. Ain't nothing you can do except listen while I got the breath. I'm listening. It's a big camp, Captain. Must be a thousand Shoshone. Half of them warriors. Azen's report said crazy horse and dog soldiers. And more moving in from the north all the time. I saw a lot of Sioux. You'll need all the army you got and then some. In my blouse, Captain. Yeah, I'll get it. It's a map. Best I could draw. They're in a box canyon. You can get them good if they stay put. Thank you, Feeney. Feeney, you better stick around. We need you real bad. <laughs> Can't oblige you, Captain. I'd like to, but I... You want something, Feeney? Yes, sir. Merriweather. Merriweather. Feeney. You stay, too, Captain. He'll need a witness. I'm... Willing him something. You always get in trouble alone, Feeney. Without me, you bungle everything. You want to come along, Merriweather? I, I'm dying. Ah. Comics don't die, Feeney. They don't know how. No true sense of tragedy in them. You... You get posy, Merriweather. Treat her good now. I won't. Feeney. Feeney. He can't answer you now, Trooper. What kind of an exit line was that? You see, I I told you. Even on a curtain speech, you... I'm afraid this isn't my best performance, Captain. <laughs> Maybe it is, Mary Weather. Maybe because you're not play acting. <laughs> Fort Laramie is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and stars Raymond Burr as Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry with Vic Perrin as Sergeant Gorse. The script was specially written for Fort Laramie by Kathleen Height, with sound patterns by Bill James and Ray Kemper. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Featured in the cast were John Daner and Parley Bear. Jack Moyles is Major Daggett, and Harry Bartell is Lieutenant Seibertz.
Company, tension. Dismiss. Next week, another transcribed story of the Northwest Frontier and the troopers who fought under Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. For the younger members of the family, this is an ideal time of year. School's out and they have plenty of time to play and be with their friends. Perhaps it's not quite so easy for us grown-ups who are thinking ahead to the time when our children will be ready for college, wondering whether we'll be ready with enough money to pay their tuition. Instead of fretting, sign up with a payroll savings plan where you work. Start buying those safe, profitable United States savings bonds regularly. Start now to invest in your future security and in the security of your country. <laughs> 